Underestimated girlfriend will have what results? Two couples intend to play a shooting competition, the girl fired first, but missed her target. When it was the man's turn, he casually shot and hit it without fail, claiming it was just luck. The girl was not convinced to have another round. This time her eyes became sharp shooting skills than the man's were even more accurate. Boyfriend looked dumbfounded. Just a few days ago, the girl was hiding in the bar. The police chased in. The girl spots the boy and walks towards him. The boy also had the pistol on his waist. Tacit understanding towards the girl. Then the two pretended to enter the room as a couple, successfully deceiving the police search. The two quickly warmed up and fell in love. But their friends coincidentally advised them to come to their senses and concluded that they would last at most six months. I didn't expect that the two of them would actually get married. And six years have passed in the blink of an eye. During this time, they kept their identities as killers hidden from each other. Usually John is a construction engineer and Jane is a professional lawyer. They live a life of 9 to 5. Home on time for dinner in the evening, but they are like most ordinary couples. When they lost their passion, their marriage became dull and tasteless. They either mocked each other's aesthetics or disliked each other's cooking and even slept a meter away from each other. Although the two are married, it does not affect their mission. John has an arsenal of weapons hidden in his home, whether weapons or cash. But he likes to act alone. He is still so impulsive at the age of several dozen years. All by improvisation, in this operation, he took four heads. On the other hand, Jane has transformed her cupboard into a high-tech one, and her weapons are no less impressive. Jane likes to play as a team, with technology aiding in careful planning. However, there were times when she played bigger than John, and Jane removed her jacket to reveal her little leather dress inside, when a small leather whip subdues the target. By the time the hitman noticed this, she had already hung her handbag on the wall lamp, stepped on the fence and leapt down to the ground floor at the speed of light, and also took a cab home on time for a neighbor's party. However, once the two were given the same assignment, a man nicknamed Benjamin had a bounty on his head from two hitmen. Jane arrived in the desert early, set up a minefield, and waited for her target to be blown to bits. However, an uninvited guest barges in early, crashes her infrared monitor and carries a large rocket launcher, apparently intending to intercept and kill the target of her mission. In her haste, Jane didn't realize it was her husband, John, and she grabbed her rifle and shot him straight down. Fortunately John was wearing body armor, and the rocket he used to kill the mission target was fired back at Jane. This back and forth, not only successfully detonated the minefield, but also released the mission target, but did not even see Jane's face. The two of them immediately launched a pursuit with the aim of finding out which annoying guy was interfering with their mission. Just then, Jane's boss calls and reminds her to kill the other side within 48 hours if her identity is exposed. John, however, is faced with the same situation. Based on the computer fragments at the scene, he found Jane's name. It never occurred to him that his wife was also an assassin. Sweet Jesus, mother of God. On the other hand, according to the video replay, Jane also found out that the nasty man was her husband John. The couple finally came to the most awkward situation. When they get home, they start to test each other frantically. Although they are both concerned about each other's work, both sides are testing the waters, and neither couple is going to come clean. Therefore, John poured wine for Jane and deliberately dropped the bottle on the floor. But Jane caught it reflexively. The two men froze on the spot. I got it. I'll get a towel. John found a pistol to defend himself. Jane tried to leave by car, and John came after her to keep her. John came after her, but the gun accidentally discharged and pierced Jane's windshield, shattering the last chance to explain. John broke the car window and flipped in, but Jane thought John was going to kill her, so she chose to jump out of the car and leave him. The next day, Jane calls in many people to help her move. When love comes to an end and takes away what belongs to her, venting her emotions becomes an instinct instead. Jane tore up the doll bear they won in the shooting competition, and she still couldn't help feeling sad inside. Even when she saw their wedding video, she didn't make up her mind to really break up. She doesn't know if she loves John more or wants to follow the rules and kill him. When John returned home, his heart, for the first time, had the urge to curse she mother. The house was emptied and even his gun room was ransacked by Jane. The woman was nasty when she was ruthless. It was necessary to teach her a lesson. Just as Jane ordered a search for John, her men found him in the building's elevator. The base, which had never been exposed before, was discovered and they had to initiate an emergency evacuation plan. When John arrived, he saw Jane's dashing back. And although he had the opportunity to shoot, he couldn't hide the love in his eyes. 
This you catch me situation dispels the dullness of marriage and becomes passionate and romantic. After losing track of Jane, John finds traces on the destroyed documents. According to the clues, he arrived at a construction site and just entered the elevator. He was stuck due to a malfunction and could not move. At the same time, the alarm in the elevator emits a friendly beep. Needless to think, this is Jane's greeting. Jane tells John to behave himself and leave or she will blow the cable and send him down. John refused without even thinking about it. But Jane's men literally blew the cable and the elevator fell quickly, hitting the ground and causing a lot of dust. Looking at the wretched appearance of the ground, Jane's heart had an indescribable despondency. That boy can't really be dead, right? Jane arrived at the restaurant where John had proposed to her. Tears slipped from the corners of her eyes, both for John and for the nostalgia of their marriage. At that moment, a man picked up a bottle of wine and gently took her hand and poured it for her. It turned out that John was in the other elevator. He just switched the elevator signal to avoid this round. John is not sure if the woman he loves still loves him, so he persistently pursues Jane, wanting to talk about their feelings. However, both are provocative personalities. So they go out on the dance floor to tango and just take the opportunity to clean all the weapons off of each other. After a hard time waiting for the chance to talk, John accuses Jane of treating marriage like a job, while Jane says that John is playing with she feelings. The two of them don't get along, so Jane turns away in frustration. Suddenly there was an explosion and John was worried and tried to go upstairs to find her, but found that Jane had blended into the crowd. He hurriedly chased after her, but a passerby curiously asked him, You took the alarm clock out? As it turned out, Jane had placed a miniature bomb on him, a bomb that would not kill him, but would also injure him. The two men returned to their empty home in silence. The door was locked by Jane. John had to feel his way in through the yard. He broke the glass in the window and climbed in. Then he found a pistol in a hidden compartment, and the couple began a game of cat and mouse. Jane sprayed John with the gun, while John shot him with the pistol. The two men fought each other without any intention of holding back. Your aim as bad as your cooking, sweetheart. And that's saying something. John ripped off the gas pipe and blew up Jane's weapon, and the two turned and started fighting again. Jane held John down and punched him hard while John put her on the ground and kicked her in the back. By this time, the two men were exhausted and looking at the gun on the ground. Although they both grabbed their weapons, no one shot first, and it was John who took the initiative to break the Come peace. Come on! George. The two men could no longer repress the feelings in their hearts. The killer rule had passed, and at this moment, what they cared most about was each other. That night, the 48-hour time limit for eliminating each other had passed, and the two killer organizations put out a reward for them. At this point, unbeknownst to the two, they were drowning in happiness, making loving breakfasts and talking about their years as killers. They even found out that the other half of the other planned the deeds that once made the industry a sensation and couldn't help but cast adoring glances at each other. Meanwhile, many of the killers attacked in the morning light. A smoke bomb falling from a window, they ducked into a storage room, heavily armed, and tried to fight back. But a bomb rolled in and landed right under a gasoline barrel. They escape without thinking, but the killer is eliminated and they lose their multi-million dollar mansion. John finds his brother and inquires about the situation, and he learns that two rival assassin groups are looking for them. They decide to find the man who calls himself Benjamin and complete one last mission to show their loyalty and ease this crisis. Jane's sisters quietly sent her information about Benjamin being held in the second basement level of the federal courthouse. Two of the industry's top assassins worked together to get Benjamin out, but this man did not have any special features. After taking a hammering from Jane, he admitted his identity. I'm not the target, you are. Both of you. After the organization learned that the parties were secretly married, so the two sides teamed up to plan this mission, hoping the two would tear it apart. Just then, John found a tracker on the man's belt. Jane also saw a large number of killers coming from downstairs, leaving them only a minute at most. The killers surrounded the place and they saw only Benjamin alone. It turns out that the two were hiding in the sewers to avoid a head-on confrontation, with Jane saying there is a boat that will allow her to escape and John saying there is a cargo plane that will take him away. However, they both understand that fleeing separately is just a way to survive. Not to mention that after all they've been through, they're not willing to give up on the marriage and would rather die with the love of their lives. So, they decided to fight back. They found the mall next to them and made it the place for a showdown. See you in the next life, Jane.
Likewise, they launch a surprise attack with cold weapons to reduce the pressure. John's simple expression washes away the gloom of the countdown to life. As the killers grew in number, Jane found a collection of knives, throwing them as flying knives. But John is accidentally stabbed. Sorry. As the killers arrive, the couple is exposed on the trail. They ducked into the elevator and fought back and forth across several floors. Then, John acts as a decoy going back and forth while Jane takes the high ground to fill in the shots. But the enemy fire is heavy. The two escape into a warehouse. At this point, the body armor is shot to hell. And only one more wave of bullets and it's over. Boat and is looking pretty good right now, isn't it? It's a lot this time of year. After doing the last love talk of their lives, the two are ready to start the final struggle. stopped. Both were lucky to survive. Their love won the respect of the organization. And after deep communication, the two quit the assassin organization. This is how the story ends.